Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, if you are tuning in expecting a midweek 180, apologies, no midweek 180 this week. I haven't managed to film one because I've been super busy. I've literally just finished at a VW press event driving the new Touareg. There will be a video coming to the channel soon. But I wanted to get something off my chest and also come back on a couple of comments I've had on the channel recently about the price of cars that I am reviewing. And I'd just like to have a chat about just the price of cars in general and just how expensive they are and how on earth anybody with a normal salary and normal life can buy a new car these days. Okay, we are safely on to the M4 driving home from Castle Coombe. And I thought I'd have a chat because I want to get something off my chest. And I also want to come back to a few comments that have been on the channel recently. Just about the, the cost or the price of some of the cars I've had on the channel recently. But I wanted to broaden that out actually, just to the general cost of new cars. I think we've seen this inflation of new car prices over the last I don't know, four years or so that's just been astronomical and almost you know difficult to understand i'm guessing that the big drivers for the inflation of new car prices big ones manufacturers are going to quote covid right they're going to quote the global pandemic and the knock-on effect of things like the silicon chip shortage general shortage of materials all those things led the cost of manufacture to go up in a big way but i also think that the demand for cars um manufacturers have almost said well we could probably put our prices up a little bit because people still want the cars and those things have have meant that we've seen dramatic increases in cars and i i only think back i don't know six seven years ago i bought an audi s4 a year old for thirty thousand pounds that equivalent car today would be double that only just a few years later and, and I wanted to try and explore why that is but maybe more importantly what that means to the average car buyer and I'd actually say the average car buyer probably isn't looking at a car that costs 50 or 60 thousand pounds many of you will be looking at cars that if they're more than 10 thousand pounds that's a luxury but it's how we buy cars today so I guess first up how I've bought cars in the past most of the cars I have bought in the last 20 or so years have been um, outright purchases or uh, a down payment and a bank loan so at the end of your bank loan or your higher purchase agreement you've paid off the car and the car is yours and then I generally keep cars quite a long time five or six years isn't an uncommon thing and it was always a nice thing when you buy a car like that after your two or three years you paid the car off it's yours and you can drive around for a couple of years in a car that owes you nothing and that's the best feeling in the world the problem with modern day car buying is this trend for PCP agreements where you put a smaller deposit down and then you pay a monthly amount of money and then you have a balloon payment at the end and what that enables you to do is effectively get into a car that's probably more expensive than you can really afford as long as you can afford the down payment and the monthlies that's generally most people's budgeting decision and I can't say too much about that because that's exactly how I bought my Porsche my Porsche was just over £60,000 I didn't have £60,000 to spend on a car surprisingly and therefore the only way of me buying that car was to go down the PCP route but I felt a little bit more confident with a Porsche because residuals on Porsches are so good that I thought well at the end of the finance agreement I'm still going to have uh, you know a fairly strongly um, or the asset will, will hold its value as, as strongly as any car's going to there's no guarantees obviously um, but depreciation will be uh, you know minimized and then I can make a decision what I do at the end of that. Do I refinance the balloon payment and keep the car? I can make a decision at that point. But it's still, I know, at the end of my, I'm still like over £30,000 I need to refinance, which is a hell of a lot of money. But I think this trend towards 
PCP style car finance agreements is another contributing factor to the increase in car prices because the market is out there you know if you'd have put a car out 10 years ago that was 70,000 pounds you know people would have struggled to buy it today people don't look at 70,000 pounds they look at oh look it's 700 pounds a month on finance agreement and and are happy with paying that monthly fee and then at the end of two years or three years they just go into their dealer and they change the car out for another one and they kick the can down the road a little bit more and they never actually own the car they're just rolling finance agreement into finance agreement and I think the challenge I have with that is that that isn't a sustainable model for me because the two things that are happening in the marketplace at the moment firstly interest rates on finance agreements have gone up hugely in the last 12 18 months I think the interest rate on my Porsche is under 3% it's like 2.8% if I went into a dealer today I'd be looking at probably 10 to 12% interest rate and that's going to make a huge amount of difference on the amount you're borrowing. So the total cost of ownership of your finance agreement, which is your down payment, plus your monthlies, plus the interest you're paying on the loan amount, plus your balloon payment, um, it makes a big difference. And I think that there are many people out there that will have um, a finance agreement in place at the moment. Maybe they've had it for two years and they're on a nice single figure APR number and they're going to get to the end of their finance agreement next year and they're going to go into their dealership and they're, even if they swap the car like for like, value for value the same, I think they're going to end up with a huge shock because their monthlies are going to go up significantly because the APR has gone up significantly. And their only option is to stomach the extra money on their monthlies or to give the keys back or to go for a cheaper car. And I just think there's going to be a rebalancing of the car market next year maybe where where that starts to take effect and what that will do to uh, the second hand used car market I've always been one to buy used cars I've never bought a brand new car in my life I've always bought sort of year old ex demonstrators because I, I feel like someone else takes that initial hit of depreciation and in some cases you know you lose the the, the VAT the second you drive it off a forecourt if it's a, a personal purchase so my my concern is that these inflated prices I, I just can't see it carrying on but I wanted to have a conversation about it because you know I I am not I'm not comfortable with looking at a car you know th this this defender I'm in right now I love this car to bits um, could I buy this car on a finance agreement absolutely I could could I afford the monthly payments absolutely I could they'd probably be I don't know 800 pounds a month maybe a bit more clearly it depends on how much money I put down in the first place could I afford that yes am I comfortable paying that no I've got other priorities in life I'm not one of these youtubers that swaps in and out of cars every six months that that pays monthly payments that you guys don't see that are probably 1500 pounds to maybe 2000 pounds a car and just 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 hops in and out of cars and doesn't worry about you know the, the hit that they could take if the numbers didn't work for them I can't do that I've been burnt by car finance before and believe me you're only burnt by car finance once it is not a nice place to be at all um, and I'm just not prepared to do that so what that means is cars like this it's a real challenge for me because I love my cars I love this car but honestly buying it is a real difficult thing because surprisingly I don't have 75,000 quid hanging around in my bank account to pay for it I'd love to know what you think I, I'm gonna start I think one of the, the things I want to do is bring to the channel new cars um, new models new tech a lot of that is battery electric a lot of battery electric cars are very expensive you know 50 60 70 80 thousand pounds or more in some cases um, used cars that's not so much for me if I do do um, older cars they'll normally be older cars with a story or older cars with with some kind of cool angle to them I'm not gonna go and review or I don't know you know a 10,000 pound family saloon that I found on auto trader that's that's not what this channel is about but I do appreciate that that the normal family has priorities in today's world of paying the bills paying the mortgage 
and therefore when I come on to YouTube and start talking about a car that's 80,000 quid, especially if I use the word only 80,000 quid, I can imagine that's a bit jarring and it's not meant to be uh, because I, I understand and I'm in that boat. I look at many of the cars that I drive on the channel and I ask myself, could I afford this car? And the answer is very often, yes. Am I prepared to afford this car? That's a very different story. Um, and that, that's the challenge in today's world. And I can't see a solution for it. But I would love to know what your thoughts are on this subject. Put it in the comments below. But for now, I'm gonna concentrate on my journey home. I've got another hour and a half before I get home. Deep joy. Um, but stay tuned to the channel. Apologies for this not being a midweek 180. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrol Petrol. Plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Drive safe.